everybody. It's another day. It's actually afternoon already. I'm getting going. That load that I picked up on Friday needs to be delivered Monday morning. So we better get going. It is Sunday when I'm filming this right now. Got to be the first thing in the morning. I have about a six, six and a half hour drive to get there. So it's not like it's a very long drive or anything, but eh, is what it is. Since we went home, uh, we'll be crossing at Pembina, North Dakota into the U.S. instead of at International Falls, Minnesota. Works out better that way for me. We might be able to go right past Fargo and get a truck wash tonight as well. I think I'll have time. And I don't think there'll be too long of a lineup on a Sunday night. So, we'll see. Maybe I'll go to the North Star Wash if they're open. Either way, we have to get rolling. Let's go. Just went through Morris, Manitoba. Shout out to Greg. Said hi to me at the Tim Hortons there. I didn't stay in there. The lineup was longer than I've ever seen it. I walked in the door there, there was like 15 people in line. Doesn't sound like a lot of people, right? But the whole place was packed. It's just a small little place. So I'll get my coffee uh, in the US when I stop. I gotta stop for fuel anyways. But shout out to Greg anyways. He saw me there as I was walking in. Said he watches my videos. Don't know if you're watching this one specifically, but he lives right outside of town here. I'm on Highway 75. This is gonna turn into US Interstate 29 in about 20 minutes. Looks like we're gonna head down to about Fargo and then head east from there. Stopping at Grand Forks for fuel at the Flying J. That's my cheapest fuel on route. Stopped here in Pembina, North Dakota, just over the border. I don't have quite enough fuel to get down to Grand Forks. Not comfortably anyways, I might have made it, but uh, I don't wanna risk it. So I threw in 20 gallons here at the gas tracks and that'll get me down to Grand Forks where I can fill up completely. The price at Grand Forks is way cheaper than here. Here I paid $369.9 per gallon. In Grand Forks, my price is $324.9 per gallon. So I'm gonna go and fill up there. Gave myself just enough, just wet the bottom of the tanks so that we can get down over there. I'm just putting this all into my record keeping books here and then we're gonna be on our way. The sun's going down already, so a lot of this vlog will be at night. I'll do my best. You can't do business where they have proudly, overtly announced and celebrated their politicization and weaponization of the judicial system, the prosecutorial system. So that's it, we're gonna talk about it tonight with Robert Bond, because uh, we're going live in, as of now, about an hour, and I got a little more meetings. Uh, and I actually don't mind not catching I just come up here to enjoy the sun. One day I'll catch a fish on camera. Again. But for now, we'll just have to do it. Okay, so we made it. I didn't have to put in 20 gallons. I guess I could have gotten away with like 10. Turn right on. 32nd Avenue South. I'm sitting at an eighth of a tank right now, so maybe I didn't even need to put anything in, but I wanted to be sure. So I didn't want to run out of fuel on the way here, so. Uh, I don't like running this low. If it was cold outside, I definitely would never do this. Winter never came this year. We had it for what, one or two days? On the left side. But even right now, it's minus one Celsius. So it's like 30 Fahrenheit. February, it's beautiful. Beautiful. You it's, have arrived at your destination on the left side, Flying J Travel Plaza. If this is the future of winters here, I am a okay with that. So the bad news is that uh, we running a little bit slower than we wanted to because we had to stop for that fuel there in Pemina. Now I don't have time to run through Fargo to grab a truck wash. I was really hoping to be able to get there, but it doesn't look like it's gonna work out now. So we may have to delay that. I wish they had a blue beacon, well, one in Manitoba and at least one here in Fargo too. Is there any good truck washes that you guys know of that's sort of like blue beacon where they wash the truck for you? Sort of like North Star in Fargo. Is there something like that in Grand Forks that I just am not aware of yet? 
make sure I get diesel number two. Which one is diesel number two? Diesel number two. I don't need diesel number one in this weather. Uh, tell the world that I am fueling because the government likes to know everything I am doing every day of the week, whether if I'm at work or not. Even when I'm not at work, I still have to log that day as, you know, off duty. They still need to see that log for that day. Ah. So, where's my jacket here? What in the world? What in the world? Where'd I put my jacket? There you are. What are you doing under there? Okay. So, I have some happy news to report to you. Last time I talked to you, uh, I was uh, talking about intermittent fasting. Pretty much what that means is I eat for eight hours of the day and I fast, or I just don't eat for 16 hours overnight. So if I stop eating at 5 p.m., I just don't eat anything until 9 a.m. the next day, right? It makes it easy because you're sleeping most of that time anyway. So your body doesn't really have time to bug you too much about being hungry. Last week, I lost four pounds. Started the week off at 227 pounds, heaviest I've ever been. Haven't been able to shake it. And uh, when I went home, I weighed myself, 223 pounds. So it's working and I can feel it working too. Just giving my body a chance to like, I, my biggest thing is I overeat. I eat too much and I eat cause I'm bored. And I'm bored at night before I go to bed. Oh, let's have some munchies, or even if it's something healthy, or whatever. It's just, I'm always shoving stuff in my face because there's nothing else to do sometimes. <laughs> I'm just, why not, right? And then my body gets used to that. And then when I stop doing that, it's suddenly mad at me. Like, what are you doing? We need food. No, we don't. No, we don't. I've eaten enough today. I don't need more food. Stop eating now. So for the first day or two, my body was kind of upset at me. Like, hey, why aren't we eating? We need to eat now. We're going to die. It wasn't that bad, but then I got used to it. My headaches went away. I found myself drinking a lot more water. This is just one week. Just one week into this. I already lost four pounds. That's how fast. I guess it might not go that fast the whole time. It might just be the initial like bloating of all reading all the time that just sort of went down. But hopefully, I mean, I want to get down to between 180 and 190. Under 200 and I'd be happy already. So if I could lose like 25 pounds, that'd be great. I don't expect to lose that much that quick forever, like this whole time, but I just figured I'd share that news. I was, I was happy to see that and hopefully, hopefully that continues. Okay, so we bought 707.895 liters or 187 gallons here. My price was 324 a US gallon. Cost me 605.90 US. Uh, converted, that's $1.15.7 per liter. As opposed to a gas tax earlier today, we paid $1.32 a liter or 369.9. So if we go 369.9 times 187 gallons, that would have cost me $691.71 in Pemina, whereas here it only cost me $605, the same amount of fuel. It was a $100 difference. And in Canadian funds, it cost me in uh, $1.32. Let's say we bought 707 liters, well, 0.8 liters, uh, at $1.32, that's $934 Canadian. Instead, we spent 819 subtract 819 it was $818.30 cheaper approximately $118 cheaper Canadian to buy my fuel here instead of there that's why I did what I did that's money I can use for myself to put food on the table because groceries are so expensive right now gotta do what we can to survive Gotta stop printing money so that my money in my bank doesn't keep becoming worth less and less. Really starting to 
think about Bitcoin a lot. I think I might, uh, I think I might buy a little bit. We'll see. Might start off with just like a hundred dollars worth. I'll talk to Britt about it. At least that has a finite supply, right? There's only what, 22? Is it 22 million Bitcoin out there? And they don't keep printing off more and more and more and more. Let's go, let's get out of here. It's here for too long again. Had to be done though. Now I don't have time to wash the truck. That makes me sad. But again, we're just trying to survive. It's supposed to be a big snowstorm rolling in here tomorrow. It's not supposed to be as bad in Minnesota, but they are gonna get some snow, which is another reason why I spend, you know, $120 washing it all down tonight just for it to snow and get all full of dirt in the morning again, right? Ah, eventually you just gotta do it, even though it's gonna get dirty again. Winter time is a nasty season. You really can't wait for spring, real spring to show up. Not, none of this fake spring. I want the real spring. Stay green. Stay. quiet out here at this time of night. Well, that's why I prefer night driving. Less people to worry about, less chances of someone running into me. I'm just going to go up here around the corner, park right at the gate, and I'll be ready first thing in the morning when they want to unload me. Got my new marker lights installed before this trip. I like them. I think they look all right and nice and bright. I'm stuck parking here because the lineup at the gate was full. Great. There was at least, oh, six or seven trucks. I didn't count them while I was there. They were lined up on both sides of the street going right up to the gate. There wasn't even one more spot for me to park. Not even one spot. So, I had to come down the street here to this open lot. This is the only place I could find to park around here. And I guess they're all getting unloaded before me. I was hoping to get unloaded first thing so I'd have time to run up to Kenora tomorrow yet and get loaded if I, if that's what happens. <laughs> we also have to wait for Britt to get a hold of us because tomorrow morning she has an appointment, uh, an ultrasound at the fertility clinic. And uh, it all depends on what that ultrasound uh, how, or how it goes. The egg retrieval is either going to be on Wednesday or Thursday. So if it's on Thursday, I got some time to run back and forth here yet, right? But uh, if it's on Wednesday, I wanted to quickly run up to Kenora, grab another load, bring it back down here, quickly deliver it, and then go home. Just sneak one more in, right? And with that many people in front of me, I don't know how long they've been there. Like, it's the weekend. So I don't know if they've been there all weekend or if they all came out today. Could have been that they all came today. I wasn't expecting that. Well, next time I'll know better. I've never seen that many trucks lined up at the gate ever at, on any day. So it's obviously going to be very busy. So I'm going to still show up there when the gate opens because I'm sure there's more trucks lurking around here somewhere that also couldn't fit at the gate there. So they're probably all going to show up tomorrow when the gate opens as well. So we'll see what time I get out of there at when I get unloaded because everybody's got to untarp. Everybody's got to roll up their tarps, put away their equipment, get unloaded. Only three guys can get into the building at a time. So I'll be sitting outside for a little while yet anyway. Well, that's okay. I mean, that's trucking. That's the way it goes. I'm not too upset about it. A little disappointed. But, uh, yeah, what can I... What can I do? It is what it is. There is a caribou coffee right across the street here that I can go get some coffee at in the morning. There's a plus side. See, there's always a silver lining to every 
dark rain cloud. I rushed all the way over here. I, I, if I would have known this, I could have left uh, uh, left tomorrow morning from home, possibly. I mean, we'll find out tomorrow. Find tomorrow. I'm sure. I'm sure I'll still make good time. I mean, they get you unloaded so fast here. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. But anyways, I'm gonna go to bed. I'll see you guys here in the morning. Thanks for watching the video today. Time for me to get to bed. I have one more question yet before I go to bed and before you guys sign off. My tarps are getting pretty old. Uh, I've been keeping keeping up with them. They are dirty, yeah, but I have been keeping them patched. Every time there's a hole, I give it a patch. But they're becoming more patch than tarp. So I'm gonna have to replace these soon. I'm wondering if you guys know by experience of any good place I can buy new tarps and how I can get them up to Manitoba if they're not already in Manitoba. How much do they cost? I'm looking for uh, a set of three. I got two end tarps and a center tarp with uh, eight foot sides, flaps on the front of the end and uh, front, obviously. Blue. They've got to be blue. So if you guys know of any company that you'd recommend to me, let me know down below in the comments. If you make tarps and you are the manufacturer of the tarps and you would like to sell me some tarps, get a hold of me at my email, truckerjoshvlogs at gmail.com. I need a new set very soon.